Hi guys, this is jasonroll.com and I'm here with the first foldable OnePlus phone, the OnePlus Open for an unboxing. So here we are and I have to say that finally there is a company out there that provides a handset, a foldable handset, which doesn't have a visible crease down the middle. Okay, so a bit harder to unpack than expected, at least I didn't drop it. This is the charger by the way. And here we go. Basically, it's a rebranded uh, Oppo Find uh, N3. And uh, as I said before, the crease is much well, much better hidden compared to the Samsung phones out there, to the Huawei phones out there and Xiaomi phones out there. It's also a bit more elegant on account of the fact that we have so much metal and this unusually big camera at the backside. Probably the biggest camera on a foldable phone in the market. The price is uh, 1,800 euros. It's pretty steep. It was launched in October 2023. It's still pretty fresh and uh, it comes with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and a periscope camera with an interesting setup plus a brand new image sensor from Sony with the whole Lithia technology. Okay so we have here the green version and let's see what's inside the box. We start off with the Super VOOC charger, 67 watt charge, USB-A connector. Then we get serious with the other accessories in this red box. Okay, so first things first. These are two parts of a case meant to protect the handset from its wear and tear. I've seen this before from Samsung. And here... We're also getting other extras like the cable going from USB-C to USB-A, a membership card, a special uh, red cable club uh, membership, the welcome uh, manual and quick guide. This is probably a message from the folks of OnePlus and the metal key used to access the slots plus a bunch of stickers which are quite lovely if you ask me and finally an extra safety guide so there's a lot to unpack here especially manual wise okay actually put everything on top of the phone not the smartest idea in the world okay and for now let's just try and focus on the handset itself Okay, so this is what the phone looks like. It closes without a gap and it has plenty of metal here to be felt. It's actually aluminum, but inside there are other things like a special molybdenum titanium combination. And once again, it's a huge camera at the backside, so much so that on a flat surface, you're going to be seeing it lifted quite a bit. Not sure if you can see this, but it's quite the lift here. It's quite beefy. Now we have measurements for it. Um, first of all, this is an IPX4 certified phone, which means it's splash resistant. And at the same time, I should probably also mention that it's 11.7 millimeters in thickness when closed and when open, a decent 5.8 millimeters. The weight is also decent. It's somewhere around 239 to 240 grams which is quite okay in my book. And as I said before, the crease is much less visible than on other phones. It's here down the middle, but it's better hidden. Okay, so we have a single spine hinge with the 69 hinge components. I have vibes here, vibes of the Nokia communicator, vibes of a Sony Vio. I'm getting a lot of old school vibes of the um, portable PDAs of the past, of the remote past. We also have the slider button, which is back, and you can see it here. It may be gone from the iPhone, but it's still a thing on the OnePlus handsets, including this one. It's a comfy phone to use with a single hand when you're using the um, cover screen, the external cover screen, which is comfier to type on compared to the one from the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Also comfy to hold when opened up and easier to open up compared to usual expectations of such handsets so comfort is pretty major here fingerprint scanner inside the power button and a comfy volume button now as far as the screens are concerned we have quite a lot to talk about now uh, this panel you have here well the internal one is a 7.82 incher there's something to remember it's the foldable panel it's called flexi fluid amoled with ltpo3 which means that it can drop down to one hertz it shows 1 billion colors, has Dolby Vision, 120 hertz refresh rate, plus the atypical resolution of 2248, excuse me, 2268 over 2440 pixels. Other things worth mentioning, well, the external screens, the other 
panel. This one is a 6.31 inch screen with the LTPOT Super Fluid OLED technology. It has a resolution of 11, 16 over 24, 84 pixels. So quite impressive when it comes to the panels included here. I should also probably mention that it has 120Hz refresh rate and Dolby Vision as well. Now, uh, with that out of the way, we can definitely go inside the phone, even though I'm prone to discuss more about the design. I have to stick to the point and uh, go to the processor. The processor here being a um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's actually Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 indeed, yes. And we have uh, 512 gigabytes of storage plus uh, 16 gigs of RAM, which you can add up to 12 gigs extra from the virtual expansion. No micro SD, and just so you know, LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. The battery here is a 5000, nope, not 5000, rather 4805 milliampere hour, 67 watt charging, promises to be juiced up in a mere 42 minutes. We also have stereo speakers, you can see two of them on the bottom and uh, two of them on the top side and even an infrared emitter made room here. There's 5G connectivity, Wi-Fi, up to Wi-Fi 7 actually, there's Bluetooth 5.3, GPS dual band and we also have uh, NFC for your NFC needs, for your payment needs. And USB-C 3.1 port at the bottom side in case you were wondering. Now the cameras, we have plenty to talk about, so a very discreetly integrated internal 20 megapixel selfie camera with an ultra wide lens here, while the other selfie camera from the external panel is a 32 megapixel cam, so 20 megapixel inside, 32 megapixel outside, both ultra wide and brandishing 4K 30 frames per second capture, um, which is uh, pretty major. At the back side, we have a lot to talk about. This is a triple camera setup with an uh, impressive flash here and Hasselblad logo, Hasselblad technology. The main camera is a 48 megapixel shooter with f1.7 aperture and a Sony Lithia brand new sensor with stacked pixels able to deliver improved low light capture. There's optical image stabilization and then we have this tele um, photo camera, 64 megapixel, uh, 3x optical zoom, however a special 6x in sensor zoom which warrants the use of a periscope camera and also up to 120 impressive ultra resolution zoom plus autofocus. Finally the third camera is the ultra wide one 48 megapixel with autofocus for your macro needs and I see there's an extra sensor here unless it's another sort of flash or mechanism probably something for depth detection. So what the lithia means in the pixel stacking that there are two layers of pixel transistors below the photodiodes, so yeah. And Hasselblad also brings a special portrait feature, aside from the color calibration of the company that put a camera on the moon. So if you go here, you're going to see first the impressive 6x zoom, which is truly impressive if I'm being honest. And then you're going to see the modes, night, high resolution, panorama, movie, slow-mo, long exposure, and dual view and time-lapse, plus the X-pan. And there's, there's the portrait, which you can apply to one, two, or three X. There's the photo mode with some extra options here. There's the video section, which includes extra stabilization and HDR. You can also do 10 bit capture and you can also play around with RAW and RAW plus. And you can make good use of the external screen. So here, for example, you're just seeing uh, your shots. And here, if you press this, you're going to be using the external screen as a uh, preview window, as you can see here for yourself. Okay, and here you have an option to use the cover screen to control the camera. Okay, enough about the camera, I think there will be more to cover when the review is done. Uh, there's plenty of technology here, but what may interest you is the, well, interface. It's Android in a different flavor, 13.2 with Oxygen OS 13.2. Now, uh, you can split the screen in two and you can definitely notice that we have a taskbar here. Nothing out of the ordinary until you do this. You can perform the split screen and you can add an extra window if you want to for the split view. So there's this extra window here. You can split the screen in three. You can have, for example, at the top side, a video player and two other windows at the bottom. That's just one example. It's your decision how to split and resize your windows. You can transfer content between them with drag and drop and you can have app pairs at the ready in the taskbar here, which is quite useful.
And that's just one example of the multitasking which you can do here. There's also the so-called flex mode, not called like that here. Part of the experience happens at the top, part at the bottom. Also applied to Chrome, you can see part of the site here and the keyboard here. As I said before, a Vio-like experience, a Sony Vio-like experience with a very premium build and a very well hidden crease. That's what I noticed here. Okay, so aside from the whole software thing, there's also the game section with a lot of tweaks and performance modes. So yeah, gamers definitely have something to enjoy here. Of course, there are other pre-installed apps. So we have uh, apps like the infrared remote, the Zen Space, and there's also one called OnePlus Store and the o Relax. They actually put two relaxation apps here. So people think that people are stressed. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. My experience with the phone is the following. Very well hidden crease, excellent format and comfort, huge camera with a lot of promise for zoom and hustle blood, and finally a large screen which you can use as a proper phone, unlike the Z Fold 3, 4, 5. That's it for now from us. We'll be back with a full review pretty soon, but this is one of the better looking foldable phones out there. Let's see if it stands out to anything else and keep in mind the price, which is quite hefty, 1,800 euros. That's it from us. Goodbye.